Hello and welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the north woods of Maine. Kinda, sorta, this time. I am going to fill you in on a few of the projects I have been up to the first few weeks of fall. This includes some watercolor and encaustic. I am definitely going to update you on my knitting. If you are a patron of this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you for the financial investment you make in this creative journey and work. Thank you to all who choose to leave insight and comments. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. mentioned before on the podcast how I had been intimidated in the past by art and drawing and sketching and having it actually look like something in the end. But I've been really motivated and encouraged by Let's Make Art with Sarah Cray on YouTube and their tutorials. And so I ordered one of their kits for The Wolf and I tried my hand at it. And I was really pleased with the results and I used the video tutorial uh, to follow along and I did draw it out, uh, traced it out as you saw using graphite paper. One of the reasons I have an interest in perfecting my watercolor was I could use it under my encaustic art. You really can't use acrylics underneath encaustic. I have seen it explained that it causes the encaustic to peel, it doesn't adhere, and so longevity can be compromised. And so I originally started down this watercolor road in order to work with my encaustic. So when I had the chance to take this tutorial and run with it, I knew that I wanted to finish with encaustic and see how those two mediums came together. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know And caustic medium is beeswax and damar resin which you melt and apply hot and you use heat to adhere different layers this is a medium that can be sculpted, it can be pigmented and painted with, you can use it to finish, you can sculpt with it, as I mentioned, in its own way. But I was really curious about using the medium to finish the watercolors, as I mentioned, and create some portraiture. And so in this particular instance, I am going to use some leaf impressions to um, create a mask over the portrait of the wolf and then I'm using encaustic paint to cover the rest of it. I have talked before about encaustic and doing it but I would recommend checking out Sherry Rapogel if you're curious to know more about this type of process and also um, R&F paints have some tutorials. I was really quite pleased with the way the wolf came out. I'm still getting to understand how the watercolor paper absorbs the wax. Um, and I am thinking that there might be opportunity here for more collage elements. On this particular piece, you can see that I'm applying some r &F oil sticks to distress the surface. I have carved into it as well. Um, and you can use different colors. You can use pan pastels. One of my favorite ways to finish 
um, a piece is to gild the edges with pan pastel um, and copper or gold just kind of gives it that little bit of an archaic look and I was really going for a plaster fresco kind of ancient world look on these particular pieces. to the knitting portion of the episode. Thank you so much for joining me. I do like to take a moment to reiterate from me to you face to face how much I appreciate the support uh, around this creative project, especially to those who contribute financially through Patreon. Um, it is very gratifying, encouraging, and humbling to be compensated for the amount of work that goes into producing one of these episodes and I'm definitely feeling that in this particular moment. Um, you can see I'm in a different space. I've been at my parents um, pulling shots, managing light, thinking about content in new ways, um, you know, takes a lot of uh, intellectual and creative capital. And I love being in that, um, but I just wanted to always make sure that I let people know who are investing how much I appreciate that you also find <clears throat> monetary value here. So thank you so much. <clears throat> <clears throat> also, um, there is deep gratitude held for sharing, likes, commenting, um, it all adds to the momentum behind this project. So, thank you. Let's see, beginning of this month, you got to see me sit down with my friend Sophia and she has recently released an episode um, which details some more about our time together in Sweden and her endeavors at the moment. So if you would like to learn more about what Sophia has been up to, I would encourage you to go find her on YouTube. <clears throat> She's also added more bonus content over on her Patreon. So if that is of interest, you can certainly find her there as well. My summer, as you experienced, uh, if you've seen my previous episodes, was really quite full and I'm feeling very blessed. It did not necessarily mean there was a ton of knitting time or creative space at my house and in my studio to explore a number of different ideas. However, I did get some knitting done and I'm happy to share with you what's been happening on my needles. First and foremost, I have been addicted to this project. This is the High Low Sweater by, ah, um, the High Low Sweater by Deb Purcell, I think. I will make sure to write it down at the bottom. This is for Tidal Yarns and I am knitting this sweater in Tidal Yarns. This is her fingering. The sweater is the Salalu Sweater. Well, that doesn't sound quite right. So let's backtrack a little bit. I wanted to knit the Salalu Sweater from the Knitted Kalavala, but I did not like the construction. 
And so when I purchased or, or when I went to uh, Fiber Frolic and I worked with Patricia who kindly gifted me this yarn, I decided I would knit that sweater uh, in this yarn. And she had a great pattern there called the high-low sweater. And I think it is by Deb Purcell. Um, again, I'll make a note of that. Um, and it's raglan shaping uh, versus kind of a drop shoulder look or uh, knitted on sleeve. And so I was able to finagle the number of stitches in the body to suit the color work um, at the bottom. So it was pretty easy to navigate uh, meshing these two ideas together. I am at a point now where I'm working on the ribbing. The original is done in a two by two rib, but I've opted to do a one by one in a twisted rib. And I am right on the cusp of deciding whether I should cast off for a cropped look or continue. And I was very pleased to hear <clears throat> after a request that my friend Sarah of the Yarns at Yinhu podcast would be, um, taking some time in her audio podcast to talk about cropped sweaters, proportionality, etc. So there's a lot going on in this particular sweater because it has the color work at the bottom, um, it has shaping at the top, and so I'm, I'm trying to understand where is it best to um, cast off so it looks like a crop, it doesn't look like something that didn't finish, um, that the hemline is proportionate to the color work, um, which is proportionate to the neckline. So I've got a few things to think about and that's going to involve trying that on and I will be tuning into Sarah's episode on all things cropped uh, forthcoming over on her um, podcast, which I th think is in all the places. So. Um, iTunes, etc. So I've really been working uh, quite diligently on that. I'm knitting it on a US 4, I think. Um, I'm continuing the hem in the same. I don't want something that squishes in. I want something that kind of holds its structure. So if it ends up cropped, it's not kind of sucking in on my waist that it just kind of sits. Um, so we'll see how that all works out. And <clears throat> yeah, so I have to pick up for the sleeves and the, and the neckline still. I haven't decided on what I will do with that neckline, if I in fact will um, uh, just do a rolled neckline. <clears throat> My friend Nicole mentioned doing a rolled hemline, so it kind of looks like an eye cord at the bottom. So I do have some decisions to make uh, right now about this particular piece. This is basically what I took with me when I was traveling. Um, and you can see, as I mentioned, I'm not in my normal space. Um, at my parents, I was taking care of the animals while they were on vacation and I have stayed down here. Uh, so um, I had only brought a few things. I obviously, uh, as you probably saw earlier, I brought quite a few different mediums to work with, but for knitting projects, I kind of picked three and brought those with me. And these are the main ones I've been thinking about and attracted to over the past couple weeks. So Knitted Kalevala, the mash of the Salalu chart and the Hilo sweater from Tidal. And then I also brought with me, sorry, it's a bit of a wonky setup here in my parents' bedroom. <laughs> I brought with me the Um, Litla Diamond Shawl by Shell Oberly from Folk Shawls. <clears throat> I am knitting this in New Tiden in their Manag or Manu colorway, so natural brown. And I'm using a singles of the pre yarn, unspun yarn. And I have started the uh, lace pattern on the border. So this particular construction is cast on all the stitches at the bottom and you work bottom up adding decreases as well as a gusset that goes up the center of the piece here and um, uh, and then that carries a center lace panel and everything else just turns to garter. So it's really nice. You do have rest rows on this particular lace chart. Um, you can see that it's going to be pretty massive and um, light and lofty. And so I, I will say, and I have said in the past episodes, if you are just joining me, um, 
that I think that this end garment will be worth the investment. Uh, I don't particularly enjoy working with the singles of this unspun. Um, the staple length is um, because I'm a thrower. So I'm coming up with these spots that are thinner than others. So I'm, con I'm kind of, I say constantly, but I am, you know, evaluating my particular um, yarn as I go through to make sure I have enough yarn to create a stitch. Um, so it just takes a little bit more time and that's okay. And I will continue with it. Um, it's not something I travel with because it is delicate and while it is easy to rip apart the working yarn from the piece, um, I just didn't really feel like cramming that in and out of bags and having this get snagged on stuff. So this is picked up at night, I need to reference a chart, etc. It does take me quite a long time to do one row. So, um, and yeah, I'm hoping I, I actually indeed have enough yardage <laughs> to finish it based on the gauge that I'm getting. So, New Tiden from Honor Ak Air, uh, which is a Swedish mill, and it's a natural colorway. Uh, Cheryl Oberly, folk shawls, feels, as I've said uh, previously, it's so good to be kind of leaning into some old school, and I am feeling that more and more. Just, um, just tried and true, kind of my pre-Ravelry self, um, and it's felt really good to haul out some of these oldies book goodies. And this is a book. The final project, which is a major triumph for me, is the Frokengard. This is from Koftebokin 3, and I think maybe Koftebokin 2. Uh, there's a children's version in 3. The chart exists in both of them. My friend uh, Sue also knitted this. She's very close to finishing, and she did the translation. I, however, did not knit it as a cardigan, as it is designed. I re-engineered and knit it top down, and I added short row shaping. So this is that sweater in its uh, chart theme, but it does have some modifications that I was able to make on my own. Wow, I'm a knitter. <laughs> I was able to figure it out. Uh, so I really just kind of worked this um, based on uh, a couple of the yokes that I really like um, and looked at the numbers, looked at shaping, um, and went from there. So what did I finish? I finished the sleeve and I did do some shaping of my own. I made it up. I did try to decrease <laughs> in pattern, did not go as I had hoped, but it's on the underside, so I'm okay with that. Um, you can see that attempt right here. I took out two of the repeats, and then when I got to, to the end of the chart work, before I started the cuff, I did decrease 20 stitches all the way around, and I thought that that might add a bit of a puff to it, but it didn't, so great. Um, and then I finished it in garter stitch. I've also finished the bottom hem in garter, and um, so I wanted to kind of keep that cohesive. Let's see, ah, I'm knitting this in Hillisvog in the pelt um, sheep yarn. Uh, this is Solia, and I think that has a gray natural undertone to it, so the colors, when they dye it, get this very moody, earthy feel, and I love the way, um, it's one of my favorite yarns. It is a Norwegian uh, yarn, and I, I bought quite a bit of it when I was in Norway, and I had hoped to knit the uh, Primrose, I think that's the name of it, by Marie Wallen. It's like an all-over color work sweater, which I still might do, but we can chat a little bit about where I'm going next with Marie Wallen in a minute. So, yeah. So, I'm picking up for this sleeve, and I just need to make sure that my charts match. Um, I picked up in the same place, etc. So, um, so that's what I'm going to be working on. So, those are really the three main projects that I've attended to this past you know, month and a half since I've been home that I've been able to, uh, you know, have all together versus not in my suitcase. I did mention Marie Wallen, and if you are a patron, you're going to get a little bit more of this story, but I am contemplating casting on a yell, and I would like to 
do quite a bit of uh, change of the colors. I don't know if I just said that in proper syntactical English. I guess what I'm driving at is I would like to redo the palette for my own preference. So I kind of go into that a little bit over on the Patreon vlog for this month. Um, I have always been a person who likes scent and perfume and that type of thing. So there's a little chat about that. And um, yeah, so I'm going to delve much deeper into that forthcoming project over there, but it is hanging around in my mind. I'm feeling really motivated getting the sleeve done on the Froke guard and finishing up the body of the Salalu sweater. On, they're both on fingering. Um, so yeah, and I obviously fall here in the Northeast um, of the United States brings its whole crisp, appley, pumpkin, cozy, wood fires feeling. And that of course is a very uh, evocative of knitting vibes for me. So I am feeling it. I'm looking forward to being home by the lake very soon and who knows what will unfold in October. But uh, hopefully it is a set of sleeves somewhere within those two sweaters. I am going to bid you a fond farewell. I'm so again deeply grateful that you travel with me on this creative journey. I look forward to seeing you next time. Many fond wishes and blessings. Take care. Bye.